God who is perfect in every respect, and I hope that all of us sitting here today would not argue that fact. You believe God's perfect in every respect? You think God's ever told anyone a lie? You think God has ever given wisdom out to us to live by that has not been correct or true? No. But as perfect as God is, as knowing as much about God as we know, we still struggle in a lot of ways to totally trust God for everything in life. Why trusting God can be difficult? You know why? One, you are giving up control. To trust in God, you've got to say, God, here it is. Take it. My hands are off of it. I am no longer deciding things for myself. I am going to let you make my decisions for me. Trusting God means trusting God. Giving it out, giving it up, taking your hands off, and avoiding the temptation to retake control of it if we don't think God's doing a good job. And don't sit there and laugh because we all think that from time to time. We think God's blown it because it's not going in any way, shape, fashion, or form the way we thought about it. God, I, here's the conversation. God, I have trusted you with this and trusted you with this, and look at the mess you've made. Nothing's better. Nothing's getting better. Just look at it. I'm going to take control back and straighten this out for you. And then that's when it really gets bad, isn't it? <laughs> when we regain control of it and remove our hands from God. And we take it back. So there's that idea. Trusting God can be difficult because we are giving up control. Another thing, trusting God can be difficult too because of pridefulness. Nobody wants to admit they can't take care of themselves. Nobody wants to say, I blew it and I, and I can't fix it. Anybody here is a fixer? I mean, you just want to, you just want to fix it. I mean, there it is. It's broke. I did it. I, you know, I dropped the plate. It shattered, and I'm going to glue it all back, and it'll look perfect. And nobody will ever know the difference. But there's always the cracks that run through the plate after you've glued it. You see what I'm saying? The pridefulness of the human heart is reluctant to trust 100% in God. Because in our own limited way of thinking, we think that when we do that, when we trust completely in God, we are selling ourselves short. And that we ought to be smart enough to be able to take care of things ourselves. Anybody ever prayed a prayer and thought, well, I don't, know, I don't know whether to bother God with this or not. It's a little I ought to be able to do. You know what I'm saying? That's the mentality we use a lot of times. Why bother God with this? I mean, it's just a, it's just this, you know, but, you know, God's never bothered by your prayers, folks. He's never bothered by what you ask him to do. He never is. So, but that's a problem. Sometimes we have diff difficulties because pridefulness. And here's my favorite. Sometimes we have difficulty trusting God because we just don't like what he says. You know, he gives you a solution. You read it. Or it comes to you in the middle of the night and you sit up in bed and say, oh, that's not happening. I don't even like the way that's going. Obviously, God, you don't understand how that's going to affect my life. So we reject it. And that trust, we, we put aside the trust level of God. We don't trust God because we don't like the answer that God is giving us. To us. So there's all those things that work together, even when we know God has got it all together and has never made a mistake and has never told a lie or any of that other stuff. Why should we trust God? Because in all, verse 6, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will what? Make your paths straight. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Trust God in every way. And the path you walk will be a straight path. 
acknowledge him, recognize him, put your trust in him, and he says, I will plow a road ahead of you that will be straight as an arrow. One that you can walk down. See, trusting God does one thing. Well, it does more than one thing, but one thing it does do is create stability in your life. Anytime we're not trusting God, we're off balance. But trusting in God creates stability in your life and gives you balance that you can walk a straight path. Trusting God is always the surest way to solve life's greatest or life's smallest problems. That's why we should. You got a problem, let God solve it. He's got the answer, doesn't he? And it's usually a better answer than you have or me. And God will solve it. But you got to trust God to do that. Trusting God is always the surest way to solve life's greatest problems. And trusting God grows your faith and brings you closer to him. You want to know God? Trust him. Experiment with God. Believe what he says. God, I'm trusting you for this, no matter what it is. And I'm telling you, you will grow closer to God, and you will know God in a deeper, richer way. It grows your faith. And folks, it leads to salvation. You've got to trust God to have salvation. That's just the way it works. You've got to believe. You've got to trust. I hope we all trust God that when he says we can go to heaven, we can go there. We've got to have that level of trust in our lives. And I want to tell you, trusting God, ha- trusting God happens for you. And this, is how, this is the key to it. Trusting God happens for you when you rely upon his wisdom and not yours. I'm, now, wisdom is the key to trust. I wouldn't trust a God that I didn't think knew it all. If I thought God made mistakes, gave bad advice, or shorted me in any way, I would never trust him. Would you? So we gain the wisdom. We have to see God's wisdom for the purity that it is and the quality that it is. When we see that level of wisdom that God has and how he handles that and how he directs it towards us, then you can trust We have to know God's wisdom. We have to see God's wisdom in order to trust God with anything. James 1, 5, and I forgot to tell you this one, Becky, sorry. If you want to pop it up there, I skipped this one. Anyway, I'll read it. James 1, 5, but if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. You see, we need to desire God's wisdom in our life. The more wisdom of God we absorb, the greater our trust level in God, right? Because the more wisdom we get from God, the more we understand how much God knows. And it's easier to trust when you begin to absorb that wisdom into your life. You know, 2015, we need to trust in God in this church, for the direction that we're going and for the things that we're doing. And if we are lacking in understanding, and I'm talking to all of us, but especially the leadership of the church, if we're lacking in understanding how to direct our energies, we need to seek wisdom from God and ask for that wisdom. I believe that's what, wasn't it Solomon that did that? Lord, I don't know how to rule these people. Give me wisdom, understanding. And he did. Look what happened. So the wisdom, we need to seek an understanding. And so for, I'm, I'm just saying for this to be a great year for our church, and I believe it will be, we need to begin by trusting God and seeking his wisdom for this church and seeking his wisdom about where this church needs to go Searching his wisdom to discover what ministries we need to do. 
seeking out his wisdom to find out what missions we need to look at that'll have the most positive effect upon people's lives. And we need to do that. And we need also to trust, learn to trust one another. To give ourselves, make ourselves vulnerable. And trust people. And love people. And God can do great things when we love and trust. When we love and trust. I think our prayer for the new year should be Psalm 24, verses 4 through 5. It says, Make me know thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. Thee I wait, for thee I wait all day. God's wisdom is the key to trusting God. And trust is the key to succeeding. So we need to trust we need to love, and we need to hold on to one another. Draw close to that person that's special in your life. And work on trust. Draw close to God. Work on trust. God doesn't have to work on it. Guess who does? We do. God doesn't have to work on it. We do. And I think if we can do those things, we're going to have a great year. It's going to be great. It'll be exciting. It'll be wonderful. We'll have pages of history for this church that will be written and remembered for years to come about how God has blessed us and done great things through us. And it's all about trust, trusting in the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for this time you've given us, and I praise you for this opportunity we've had today to talk about trust. And so, Lord, I pray today that you would bless us and minister to us and help us, God, to learn and, and to give energy to this and to give our thoughts to this. And, Lord, help us to set aside the things that may take us away and let us be drawn to the things that will make us closer to you. I thank you for this church. I thank you for every person that is here today, Lord. And I pray blessing be upon them. Be with those that are absent today, that they may hear and understand, too, the need of trusting you in this new year. And God will give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Again, for all these things we ask in Jesus' precious name, amen and amen.